LWRC AR-15s, are they worth the price tag? Stay tuned. What is up guys, my name is John with PPUtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go bang. Before we get too too into it, you can check out the description below for a link to the website where we discuss these rifles in detail. While assembling your own AR does allow you to literally build the rifle to your exact specifications, sometimes it is nice to just drop some money on a gun that's going to run great straight out of the box. But do LWRC's ARs fit that bill? Up first, we've got the LWRC Individual Carbine SPR, a hot little flat dark earth rifle with a welded and pinned 14.7 inch fluted barrel that culminates in an LWRC high efficiency flash hider that also doubles as a tuning fork. This is one of LWRC's flagship piston-driven guns, meaning that unlike a normal AR-15, the gun utilizes a short-stroke gas piston to cycle rather than spewing gas and carbon directly back into the chamber, which in theory should prevent a good amount of fouling and buildup. The rifle's lower is also fully ambidextrous in all of its fire controls, which we found super convenient when paired with LWRC's California-compliant rear takedown pin system. We'll discuss that a bit more in depth later on. The charging handle is ambidextrous as well, and the gun's got ambi sling mounts in the spots that you'd expect. Except for the front. You'll need some additional hardware for that. Perhaps one of the things that we don't particularly enjoy about the SPR is the choice to go with a proprietary style LWRC handguard up front. It's 2019 and MLOC generally reigns supreme in terms of modular handguards and having to buy extraneous Picatinny rails for a proprietary system seems a little bit silly. That being said, the handguard does feel great on its own and is super solid and comfortable when C-clamped. It also doesn't feel front heavy like other piston driven ARs and you probably wouldn't be able to tell that it's a piston gun unless someone told you. For scale, both rifles are approximately the size of 12 moldy nano eggplants. The included nickel boron coated trigger is decent but not fantastic, and we're guessing that it's probably pretty close to a mil-spec trigger 6 or 7 pound pull with a bit of take up and grip. The ICSPR does come with a pretty nice pair of flip up sights, however the gas system is not adjustable, and if that's something you're interested in, check out the A5 model instead. Moving on, we've got the LWRC DI, which is essentially the same rifle, but based on the traditional direct impingement gas system that you'll find in most other AR-15s. The rifle comes set up in a standard 16-inch variation with an A2 birdcage-style flash hider that we've since replaced with a VG6 Gamma. Additionally, the handguard comes pre-installed with a few different Picatinny rails, a handstop, and some rail covers. As compared to the piston-driven SPR, the DI includes what looks like a standard MLOC style handguard, but actually isn't. It's certainly MLOC-like, but isn't quite MLOC spec, and also utilizes LWRC's method of screws to attach accessories. Inventing a thing that looks and functions like MLOC, but only works with your proprietary accessories feels a bit ridiculous, but there is a straight-up MLOC version of the rifle if that's a concern for you. It's worth noting that both rifles include LWRC's proprietary bolt carrier group, which eliminates the screwed on gas key found on a lot of other BCGs that in theory can shear off when your round count starts climbing into the tens of thousands. We put 10 rounds each of Wolf Gold and PMC 55 grain plinking ammo downrange on some splatter targets, then tested M193 mil-spec cartridges and gold metal 77 grain for maximum accuracy. We used a Schmidt und Bender 5-25x PM2 scope, firing slow and steady shots every few seconds. The first set of groups was with the stock trigger that both rifles came with. We then took the best ammo from each group and reshot an additional group after installing a Timney 3.5 pound competition trigger. We were getting about 3 to 4 MOA groups with Wolf Gold, PMC, and M193, bumping up to about 2 to 3 MOA with Gold Metal 77 grain. It should be noted that both rifles do utilize a 1 in 7 inch twist barrel, and as such, do favor heavier ammo, apparently 70 grain or above. When we dropped in that upgraded Timney trigger, we saw a jump down to 1.5 MOA with that same gold metal 77 grain ammo. As we mentioned, both of these rifles are California compliant in their current configurations due to LWRC's innovative maglock and rear takedown pin. Essentially, if you need to have your magazine locked in the gun and can't reload without splitting the receiver halves, you've got a rear takedown pin that cracks the receiver open by about a millimeter or two. 
allowing you to remove your spent mag with your mag release without swinging the two halves wildly open all the way. It takes a little bit of getting used to for certain, but once committed to muscle memory, reloads begin to feel fast and natural, and we quite like not having to deal with a floppy upper receiver while fishing around for a fresh mag. The ability to drop the bolt with the ambi release is nice as well, and can be engaged with your trigger finger easily. Is the process overall more annoying than having a normal mag release? Yeah, absolutely. But before you start smashing free state comments into your keyboard, we do think that it's important to give LWRC a little bit of credit here. At the end of the day, there are still gun owners in California whose needs can and should be catered to, and the system is about as efficient as it can be considering the legal limitations involved. All in all, we were pretty impressed by the quality of workmanship found on both rifles, and we really dig the ambi controls. That being said, there are some weird factors at play here that really want to make us ask, who are these rifles for? The proprietary handguards are a bit obnoxious, and while reliability was flawless, we honestly expected much better accuracy out of rifles in this price range. If you're not super worried about attachment compatibility and can afford to feed these guns match grade ammo or hand loads, and want to swap in an upgraded trigger, by all means take a look as they might be right up your alley. The California compliant features are also really cool if you're an oat milk latte sipping left coast elitist. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for us today, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more reviews on the way. Once again, my name is John with PewPew Tactical and we will see you next time.